Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. Hey, brothers and sisters. This is Pastor Patrick, your favorite brother from another mother, coming to you from the beautiful island of Mindanao here in the Philippines. Praise God Almighty, brothers and sisters. Praise God Almighty. Lift His name up. Lift His name up. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. I hope you're having a blessed resurrection day, the first day of the week. Hallelujah. As we remember and honor and recognize, this is the day that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice and be, black, be glad in it. Hallelujah. For the Lord has given us, hallelujah, His only begotten Son. Thank you, Lord, for He's given Jesus Christ His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. That's why the Bible says, and that's a, that's a, a psalm from the Bible right there. And another one is, you know, I'll enter His presence with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I shall be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I shall enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Hallelujah. You know, the Spirit of the Lord inhabits the praises of his people, brothers and sisters. Now, when the anointing is on me a lot, a lot of times I keep saying hallelujah. You know, and hallelujah means praise Yahweh. You know, it's a Hebrew word. One of the Hebrew words we use in English, amen, is another one. Hallelujah is another one. So, you know, some of these old religious Pharisees, I have it every once in a while, but I've talked to lots of religious Pharisees and I was kind of incognito. I was kind of undercover. They didn't know that I was a spirit-filled pastor. You know, they just knew that I was a Christian. I talked to them, small talk with them. And I always hear those religious people saying the same things, brothers and sisters. Oh, I don't like it when those people keep saying amen and hallelujah. People clapping in church, people raising their hands, people rejoicing. Oh, what's wrong with them, you know? Back where I come from... Uh, the uh, standard uh, denominational churches, you know, you weren't even allowed to clap in the church and stuff before. And now, you know, because uh, since 1907, they're kind of slow to catch on. Since 1907, Zuzu Street Revival, a lot of your denominational churches trying to catch up, you know, and they had the charismatic movement, the Jesus movement in the end of the 1960s, early 1970s that moved, that brought, you know, the... the now, I'm not talking about the charismatics, but a lot of the denominational churches, they will do spirit-filled praise and worship, but of course, it's not spirit-filled. They copy in the flesh what they see because they don't have a ear to hear or a heart to discern or, or you know, they don't have discernment. They can't uh, discern or feel the Spirit of God the way the Spirit-filled people of God are, those who have quenched the Spirit and, 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 and tarnished the move of the Holy Spirit from the words of their mouth. And that's what I hear the Lord saying. It's a tarnishing of the Spirit of God. This, the Holy Spirit of God has been tarnished by religious people. And the Lord, brothers and sisters, the Lord says, as we know in His words, you know, these things ought not be. He says, quench not the Spirit of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13 and 14. We read in there where Paul's talking about the Holy Spirit. It says, quench not the Spirit of God. Forbid not the speaking, the speaking of tongues. Quench not the Spirit. So much of that going on that's tarnished. The name of God. People are bearing false witness against the Spirit of God. Speaking bad. And speaking down to the moves of God. Oh, oh, woe unto those people in that day, brothers and sisters. Woe unto those people in that day. But you know, I know the heart of the Lord. And the Lord said when He was on the cross, He said... Forgive them, Lord, for they know not what they do. Our Lord is a mighty God and a loving God and a forgiving God. Any of you out there, just, 
you know, God gives grace to the humble, but he resists the proud. And that's what I hear the Lord saying, that we just need to humble ourselves. When we've mocked the things of God, mocked the things of the Spirit of God, attributing the works of the Holy Spirit to some demons and all this kind of stuff, we need to repent of that, brothers and sisters. We need to repent of that. We need to repent of that. And we need to come in agreement, brothers and sisters, that we don't know everything. Hallelujah. But God knows all things, brothers and sisters. For the same text that I'm just talking about, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 13, and 14, as Paul has given us a description about the gifts of the Spirit and all these things, and he tells us this, there's diverse kinds of tongues and diverse things that the Holy Spirit does, various things that the Holy Spirit does. And the hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. And the eye can't say to the ear, you know, I don't need you. So, you know, we're all one body fit together, brothers and sisters. So all those, all of those who call upon the name of the Lord and profess the saving grace through the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ. These are the sons of daughters of God. Those who are led by His Spirit, these are the children of God. Romans 8, 14. So brothers and sisters, I just caution you on those things. I caution you on those things in the background you came through. Now, brothers and sisters, let me just say this on this topic. Because I have another I have another sermon that the Lord wants me to do about healing, about the gift of healing. And I don't know if it's going to be in the same video, but what I want to try to tell you, brothers and sisters, whenever I, like as an example, what I'm saying right now, there are people who will take that to mean that anything and everything goes. You know, and right now, that's the thing about it. It's so difficult is that you deal with one ditch on the side of the road like we're dealing with right now. And my ministry is always about that on YouTube because I'm, you know, a, a preacher, a pastor uh, in the ministry from God. So the Lord always brings me to that to disciple people. And many people in America and in the world, in religious circles, run off the road into the ditch of spiritual tone deafness, spiritual uh, uh, bordering line on blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, tarnishing the name of the Holy Spirit, and coming up against the things of God. That's the, the, the vast majority of people who err, err on that side amongst Christians. But on the other end, brothers and sisters, as I mentioned earlier, the charismatic movement, we have people lots of people on YouTube who are making videos on the opposite extreme. They are hearing from familiar spirits. They are operating in a new age spirit. They're operating, in, some of them even in their own imaginations. It's not even from some kind of a spirit, but their own wild fantasy imaginations. And brothers and sisters, that's why it's so critical, so critical to have the spirit and the Word, the Spirit and the Word. You need both, brothers and sisters. Charismatic people, as I'll say this, and from your Pentecostal circles, Assemblies of God, Church of God included, all the, you know, Pentecostal, whatever, and Charismatics, particularly Charismatics, being the worst. What I mean by Charismatics? People that are supposed to be Spirit-filled Christians who go to mainline denominational churches. They have lots of spirituality and and like what Oprah Winfrey means when she says spirituality new age spirituality with no word not rooted and grounded in the world word and all this spiritual stuff that goes off the rails on the crazy train and the next thing you know they are worshiping the same God as Ozzy Osbourne which is Satan they bring in new age false doctrines and there's a bunch of people on YouTube who are doing that and brothers and sisters that's why you need the word and as I said in the beginning of this video, the majority of your denominational Christians are on the other extreme. They want to have the Word, but no anointing. It's just like eating a bunch of bread and not washing it down with water. You imagine eating a, eat the whole plate full of uh, 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 what we used to call this unleavened bread that uh, like my grandma used to, break, used to make, and they call it pone bread, and it's unleavened bread that people would make. 
and then they put gravy on it and stuff, you know, before, and especially I assume in the South, I get maybe they did it everywhere, I don't know, but uh, you have this bread, it's pretty dry, that's why you put gravy on it, it's just like a rock, uh, very dense and heavy bread. Uh, and if you imagine eating a whole bunch of something like that and then no water to rinse it down, that's what happens if you read the Word without the Spirit of God. You know that bread will get stuck in your throat. It's just all right up here. You know, you've got the Word up here. But, you know, just like the Bible says, the letter of the law brings death, but the Spirit of the law is what gives life. It's the Spirit of the law. It's the Spirit of God. That's when you get all these people. By the same thing, they start trying to, you know, be Judaizers. They're trying to follow the law of Moses. They're in love and worshiping the law, but the law is addressed to the flesh. The law that God gave Moses is addressed to the flesh. That the law that the Lord Jesus Christ gave us is addressed to the spirit. Let me give an example. I can see how the Lord is doing this sermon. It's like I'm coming and it's like unwinding. So I'm kind of like the I'm thinking about Romans, the way Romans builds as the Lord is doing this. It's awesome. I think the Lord is kind of like a new way for me to preach. And this video, as the Lord told me, he would. And this is awesome. Anyway, so it's building. So um, as an example, <laughs> as I, I stopped, I was just thinking about how awesome is the Lord. And this new way, this new way he's given me this message to build off of this. So uh, as an example about people trying to follow the law, etc. Jesus said, now Jesus is even making it so easy for us because he says it out. You know, it's not something you have to spiritually imagine or receive and all this kind of stuff. It's right there in the Word. Jesus said, you've heard it's been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. See, under the law in the flesh. Hey, listen, man. Don't sleep with any other women but your wife. Follow that rule. Hey, you follow the Ten Commandments. Don't sleep with somebody else's wife. Or a woman that you're not married to. Okay, you're married. Don't sleep with anybody but your wife. All right. Simple, check in the flesh. But Jesus says, speaking of spiritual things, listen to me, all you who want to follow the law. Jesus said, you've heard it's been said, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, who he whoever looks on a woman with lust has committed adultery already with her in her heart. So see, those who think that following the law is something so great and so high and that, you know, people in the New Testament are people who are saying, oh, I've got grace and free will and all this. They're living in sin. When reality, Jesus says, it's not just about, hey, you slept with some woman. Don't sleep with somebody else, some woman you're not married to. Jesus said, if you look on a woman with lust in your heart, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. So God is showing us in the New Testament, it's spiritual, which is even higher than the natural. The law is for the natural mind. Handle not, touch not, taste not. God says, do everything as you've done anything you've done unto these, the least of my brethren you've done it unto me. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. God takes it to that, to a personal relationship. That's another thing about trying to follow the letter of the law. It's a list of rules. It's, it's as it even says in the Bible in Galatians that the the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to the knowledge of sin and death. So, the law is a master. It's a boss over people. Do this. Don't do this. Do this. Do that. Whereas, a, if you're a born-again Christian, we're in a personal, loving, father-child relationship with God. Completely different, brothers and sisters. As Paul lays that out. You don't even think about it that way. The Lord is just enlightening my mind right now. Even that's what Paul is laying out in Galatians. He talks about Hagar, who is the mistress, or whatever you want to call it, the concubine of Abraham, who has a son, Ishmael. This is the son of the bondwoman, the slave woman. And then the son he had with his wife, uh, his wife Sarah, they have a son, Isaac, who is the child of promise, the child of grace. You know, the child, you know, she was 90 years old and the, the woman, Sarah, was 90 years old. Abraham was 100 when Isaac was born. So this was, and, and she had been barren for 90 years. Then, boom, she has a son. Abraham got the ability to produce a child, which most 100-year-old men couldn't even do that. You know, especially in those days, they didn't have any of this. They didn't have any little blue pills and all that back then. 
But God did it by grace, through faith. Abraham received the seed, the child of promise, Isaac, given to Sarah and Abraham. Laughter, the Bible says, that Isaac means laughter, because they laughed when they heard that at their age they would have a child. That's the child of promise. The promise brings joy. That's a whole other sermon right there. Isaac means laughter. The promised child, the representation, the natural representation of the New Testament, of the promise of God, of the miraculous. By faith through grace, they received Isaac. There was no sorrow in that. It was all joy and laughter to receive Isaac, the promised child. So that's even a whole other sermon in itself. By grace through faith, we receive the promise and it brings laughter. It brings joy unspeakable and full of glory, the Bible tells us. Whereas Ishmael, is it even, you know, the, the angel of the Lord prophesied to his mother, Hagar, that he would be a wild donkey and would be an enemy of everybody and fight with everybody who dwell among his brethren. And today we see that. That is your modern day Middle East, the sons of Ishmael. That's what we deal with even today as God had promised. And we still see that clash which is a whole other sermon between the children of Ishmael and the children of Isaac, or in his son Israel, a.k.a. the nation of Israel, versus the descendants of Ishmael, even today. Even today. Abraham tried to operate in his flesh. That's, you know, that's a, uh, just a point, which is a whole other sermon, but it's a point to connect to what I'm saying here as an example. Ab God told Abraham, hey, you're going to have this son, and then through your seed, I'll bless the whole world. All nations will be blessed through your seed. Your seed will be like the sands of the sea and the stars of the sky. If you could count them, if you could count the sands of the sea, that's how many your descendants will be. And so him and his wife, Sarah, they tried to fulfill it themselves in the flesh. So, hey, Sarah said, hey, Abraham, go sleep with my handmaid. And then she'll have a child. Then that will be, you know, I'll take that as my child. She'll sit on my lap. That's what they used to do. She would sit on my lap and deliver the child while straddling my lap. And then it's like it's my child. That's the traditions and customs that they followed at that time. So, but what did it bring? Nothing but heartache and trouble when they tried to do it in the flesh. As Paul tells us in Galatians, that's what the law is like. It's the flesh. It's a schoolmaster to bring us to the knowledge of sin and death. But thanks be to God, He has given us Jesus Christ, His Son. And now let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. Not because what you have done by trying to follow the law, not by what you've done in the power of your flesh, but be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Not your might, not your will, not your way, but God's way. Hallelujah. And His way is one way, as Jesus said. John 14, 6, I am the way, Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. No man comes to the Father except by me. You cannot come to God by the law. For if the law, as Paul tells us, if the law could save us, then Jesus Christ didn't need to come. He died in vain. His death was for nothing. What does it say? The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Keeping the law? No, through Jesus Christ. Even as Paul asked in Galatians, how did you receive the Holy Spirit? How did you receive salvation? Was it through the deeds of the law or by grace through faith, through the blood of Jesus, by faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ? Also reference Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of your own, but a gift of God, not by works, lest any man should boast. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters, we've been redeemed from the curse of the law, the Bible says. We've been redeemed from the curse of the law. Hallelujah, hallelujah. For Jesus became the curse for us. For the Bible says, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Hallelujah. You know, I said that. I quoted that verse about six months ago or a year ago. And someone wrote on there and commented and said, I thought Jesus died on a cross. And then you're saying the Bible says Jesus died on a tree. Well, number one, the Bible does say that. Number one, you need to read the Bible. That's what it says. Number one, it's not what I say. It's what the Bible says. And number two, a cross was made out of a tree. <laughs> Hallelujah. When God sees a cross, he said, hey, you know, you could say that's wood. And what is wood? Wood is from a tree. It's a wood that's been shaped into a certain form, but it's still wood. It's still a tree. 
As Je you know, it reminds me and it makes me think of what Jesus said to Nicodemus. John chapter 3. He said, you know, um, before a man can be, you know, be saved, he must be born again. And then there's lots of people try to translate that to say, in these new translations, it'll say born from above. And that Jesus wasn't saying born a second time. He's saying, you know, spiritually born from above. No, Jesus, the King James has got it right. Now, all you got to do is look at the, the text because Jesus said you must be born again. Then Nicodemus didn't say, oh, what do you mean born from above? Like an angel's going to come down and I'm going to be born from the sky. No, he didn't say that. He responded to what the King James says. And that's got to be the translation because he didn't, he said, oh, how can I be born again? Do I need to go back and come out, of, you know, a second time in my mother's womb? He refers and, and divides that and, and, and responds to the right translation. That has to be the translation because in his response, we can see it. So he understood it to mean that he would have to be born a second time. And anyhow, so when Nicodemus can't understand this, Jesus said, if you cannot understand earthly things, how can we tell you about heavenly things? If you can't understand these earthly things, how can we tell you about heavenly things? Now that is why I, myself, call religious Judaizers also, aka Pharisees, just like the Sanhedrin people were the were most they were they were Sadducees and Pharisees. That's why I call them that, because they're just like Nicodemus at that moment. They can't even understand a metaphoric, abstract, natural statement, much less spiritual things. Now, if you think about that text as an example, actually Nicodemus was kind of being a smart aleck. You know, people don't think about that. Of course he knows he can't go back in his mother's room. He was really kind of being obnoxious with Jesus to say that. People don't even think about that looking at the text. He's really kind of making a mockery. Of course, that wouldn't even make any sense. That's just silly and, uh, and obnoxious to say that to the Lord, to anybody, much less the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, brothers and sisters, this is the type of attitude that many people have. But thank God... And let's talk grace and thank God the fact that later on Nicodemus obviously became a believer. He defended Jesus somewhat when he went before the Sanhedrin when they wanted to, you know, arrest him. And they said, uh, how do we know, you know, what a man's doing, you know, if he's being bad unless we, you know, ask him first, let him answer, you know, it, you know what's he saying? And then that's when they, they kind of rebuked Nicodemus and, you know, he kind of, he busted up their plan to arrest him at that moment. By saying, well, how can we say that Jesus is bad unless we hear what he's got to say? So Nicodemus did st stand up for the Lord a little bit. Didn't come out and say he was the Messiah, but he stood up for him. And then they said, oh, uh, go, look in, go, go look it up. There's, there's no prophet coming out of Nazareth. And then they all went home. But he did bust up there, you know, by opposing them somewhat in that debate. He kind of just, all oh, they just all went home, it says. So praise God for that. But, so there is hope. There is hope for, very, for religious pre people, brothers and sisters. There is hope. And there's also hope for those who are bound up and caught up in the spiritualism, and that's spiritism, like Oprah Winfrey type stuff. This, you know, uh, remembering, you know, I remember before, you know, I never watched it, but I would flip around the TV because I used to work nights, and there would be Oprah Winfrey on. She had a whole series, Remembering Your Spirit, you know, like the Shirley MacLaine stuff. As a matter of fact, when I was in the Army, I read hundreds and hundreds of books. And I had, you know, guard duty and all this. I used to read books all the time. And I read Shirley MacLaine's book, Out on a Limb. And it's really talking about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. At the time, I didn't understand it. But her book says, the title of it was, If you want to get to the fruit of the tree, you have to go out on a limb. And it's talking about the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. That's what she's referring to. And at the end of that book, they made a movie out of it, so a lot of people know about it now. But at the end of that movie... She starts proclaiming that she's a god. She starts chanting that she is God. And that's the end of it. That's all that stuff from Oprah Winfrey. That Oprah Winfrey does now with her. She's got some kind of an internet channel or whatever it is, radio channel. And all this. And it's, I think it's own or something is what it's called. And I guess she's still doing it. But anyway, it's you are God. That's the new age stuff. And that's where many of the people who are making YouTube videos are going. To that same type of a new age stuff. Now I am going to make a new playlist on her because I never make videos attacking people. I mean, the Lord hasn't led me to do that. I'm not, you know, I'm not naming names and all that. 
but I'm going to make a playlist of people who have done in-depth studies and research. And I listen to what they said and see that, you know, there are people who make videos attacking everybody that makes videos. There's people attacking anybody and everybody. There's one guy who told me that if you aren't, if you don't speak in tongues, you're not saved, you're going to hell. And I told the guy, he kept arguing with me about it. I told him he's crazy. I said, you're crazy, man. You know, because he said he had this vision and he got this special revelation from God. A great example of a false prophet. Someone that says they got a special revelation from God. You talk about the word to them and then their ultimate source is the special word they got from God. Not the word from God. Great example of a false prophet. And this guy, I told him he was a nut. He got mad, so he made a video. And the title of his video is Matthew Patrick Winfrey, False Prophet. Using my name. Now... This guy allows no comments on his videos. If you watch his video, you'll see that he's talking about his special revelation that if you don't speak in tongues, you're going to hell. And I won't agree with him, so that makes me a false prophet. So there are people who make videos attacking other people, which is a bunch of nonsense. They're attacking people who are not doing anything bad. And, and, and there are people who are doing that in the flesh too, and it's wrong, and it's probably just maybe more wrong just as wrong or more wrong than the people who are really new age people on YouTube claiming to be Christian. So it's all a bunch of mess. That's why I don't get into it. But just lately, this last week or two, I've had like five or six people asking me about the same channel. And then, you know, as I look at it, there's other people who also make videos who are also new age. They're, I mean, they're operating in a spirit of witchcraft, familiar spirits, or whatever. You know, and I, and I also remember how Minister Paul tangled with a bunch of them and it ended up being a bunch of, you know, that's how the devil does. You try to deal with these people, you know, and then, you know, all this chaos comes in. Unless, you know, so it's got to be that the Lord calls you and I feel like the Lord is calling me to step up on this, you know, somewhat. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, I'm going to make a playlist of videos from people who critiqued and explains the problem with these people making videos and I'll let you see it for yourself you know because the Lord didn't call me to go on here and analyze and break down people's videos you know and be like the don'ts of Christianity that's not me my ministry is to bring the gospel to people and truth that's what I always do you know people and the problem with these false people these whack jobs is that the more wacky you are the more viewers you get it seems to be the more outlandish wacky nonsense you can talk the further you can, uh, you can be away from a real ordained minister, the more people lap it up, lap it up. Because it's, you know, they're not Christians and they lap it up, they lap it up, they lap it up. And so I'm going to make a playlist. As a pastor, I'm going to make a playlist of people who are laying it out, what is wrong, what the false teaching is, and who, what, when, where, why, and how. And uh, you guys are welcome and invited to look at that playlist and listen to, you know, third party people who I've listened to and I and you know, I'm agreeing with what they're saying about the video the channel they critiqued. And that's as far as I'm gonna go with unless the Lord tells me different. And I say that. Like I said, I'm not gonna be on here in some uh you know, the internet is not the same as in person. It's a whole lot harder to deal with these witches on the internet than it would be in person, you know, like what Elijah did, calling down fire on the devil, you know, Jezebel and her Prophet, false prophets. So the internet's kind of a whole different ball game unless the Lord would, you know, command you. The Lord commanded Elijah to do that. There's people who are trying to do that who God didn't command to do anything. They're not in that position of authority. You know, so you have to be commanded and led by God to deal with these spirits at a higher level. So, brothers and sisters, also, you know, caution you to pray about it. If the Lord leads you, of course, you know, make a video about somebody. If that's what the Lord is letting you do, not in your flesh. That's what the whole purpose of this video is. We're talking about the flesh versus the spirit. And then spirituality versus the Holy Spirit. So the two ditches on the sides of the road of truth. So brothers and sisters, God bless you. God bless you all. I thank the Lord for all of the, the, the disciples of, of the living God, the disciples of Christ who I've met through YouTube. You know, I love all you guys. We're all one body. All the people who are born again Christians were all brothers and sisters in Christ. And we have to stand together for truth, not for the cult of personality. That's just like President Obama, you know, and I usually don't talk politics, but 
if you look at like on the Democrat side, it's usually a cult of personality. It's not about policies or it's not about the person, you know, having a good character and all that. It's this cult of personality. That's what Lenin and Stalin and Obama and Kim Il-un and all these type of non-Christian bad people. It's always this cult of personality. And that's what you see with the New Age people on the Internet who make videos that have all these following. It's a cult of personality. That is not what it is. We stand together for the Word of God, for the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, and biblical truth seeking Christianity. I am a truth seeker of biblical truth. And it doesn't, there's no glory to any man or woman, but to the Lord only. And I stand with all those, as, as, as Amos said, Amos 3.3, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? If I'm following Christ and you're following Christ, well, then we should be walking together pretty good. So I stand to always be a truth, truth seeker in the Word of God, in the Word and in His Spirit, not from somebody on the Internet who's rewriting their own Bible with all this sexual fantasy stuff about their personal you know, love-date relationship with Jesus as an example. Jesus is admiring the shape of their body and curves of their body and all this stuff. One woman saying that kind of stuff. Demonic, New Age lies. As one example, brothers and sisters. Praise God, brothers and sisters. The Lord has talked to me about doing videos about healing and releasing a fresh anointing of healing into the body of Christ. I'll be making a video about that on the, my regular channel. This video is going to go on the Church of the Firstborn. So I'll be making a video this week, or maybe a whole series of videos about healing and stuff, brothers and sisters, and physical healing by the power of the Holy Spirit. And those are the things I want to do. I mean, I want to talk about the good news of Jesus Christ. You know, but I ha you have to do what the Lord leads you to do. So it's not with uh, enjoyment that I would get in and mention anything about these uh, these spiritualists, spiritualists on the Internet posing as hearing from God. But you got to do what you got to do as the Lord commands us. Anyway, brothers and sisters, praise God. I don't want to I don't want to leave you uh, that way. I want to leave you with the joy of the Lord and the peace of the Lord. So I'm going to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Hallelujah. Lord, I just speak your peace that surpasses all understanding. I speak your joy unspeakable <laughs> upon your people, Lord God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I just release. I release. Hallelujah. The anointing, Lord, that you've given me. I release that anointing upon your people, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, Father. I just speak right now that every chain is broken, every bondage is broken, every sickness, every disease. Be swallowed up in victory right now through the blood, through the stripes of Yeshua HaMashiach. Right now I declare victory. Victory, victory in the name of the Lord over all sickness, all disease, all deafness. Deaf ears be open in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, for I know the Lord is... Made a way there's a brother that does transcript for these videos. Hallelujah. I command the deaf ears be open, spiritual and natural ears to be open right now in the name of Jesus Christ. For the he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the living God says to the church, not what the devils people are saying to the church, but what the Spirit of God, what the Word of God says to the church. Hallelujah, Father. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, may thy will be done in us as it is in heaven. We praise you, Father. Hallelujah, creator of heaven and earth. We thank you, Lord God, for your word and for your spirit. Lord, teach us. Teach us, Lord, to rightly divide thy word. Hallelujah. And be followers of your spirit. For your word said, those who are led by the spirit, the spirit of God, these are the sons of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Romans 8, 14. And His Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Hallelujah. Praise God Almighty. And the Lord just emphasized that's why I hesitated. Romans 8, 14. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. Those who are led by the Spirit of God. There are people on the Internet who are not led by God's Spirit, but by their own vain imaginations and by familiar spirits. 
Now, Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory, Lord God. Lord, may we humble ourselves. May we always seek your face and repent, Lord God, of our sins and follow after righteousness and holiness. Lord, that we might always be led by thy Spirit, Lord, and not be entangled with the false spirits in this world and under this world, Lord God, but that we be led always by your word, Lord God, the one and only Bible, not by words of people, but your holy word and your Holy Spirit. Father, I just speak for a hedge of protection around your people. Lord, give them, Lord, help them, Lord, to grow in discernment. Oh, what a lack of discernment in the church. These things ought not be. Lord, have mercy, Lord, for they know not what they do, Lord Kai. Lord, release a spirit of wisdom and discernment upon thy people, Lord God. Hallelujah, that they wouldn't be deceived by these wolves in sheep's clothing, Lord. Father, have mercy. Lord, for we know not what we do, Lord God. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord, that we might see. Open our ears that we might hear. Open our hearts that we might be humble to be disciplined, to be teachable, Lord God. Lord, there's so many people, especially on the Internet and, in, and even in the world today, Lord, in the end times. As Paul tells us in 1 Timothy, they're lovers of themselves heaping false teachers to their ears, to tickle their ears, Lord God. No discipline, no respect. Father, bring, bring humility, Lord, to your people, Lord, that we might not be deceived, Lord God, but that we might walk earnestly in your righteousness. Father, we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for praying for Joshua's ministry and Church of the First Morning praying for me. I need all the prayers I can get, brothers and sisters, that I might stand to do God's will, bring glory to His name as we advance the kingdom of God here in the Philippines. Ask for your prayers for all the, all the needs of the four orphanages and the feeding programs and all those things. And then I ask for your prayers for the Church of the First Born, for the YouTube ministry. Brothers and sisters, we need all the prayers we can get that we can go forward. You know, Lord, you know, as, as I've been doing this online church, the Lord has given me that pastoral anointing for it. Brothers and sisters, it's, uh, it's hot and heavy with wickedness in this world. And on YouTube, you know, 75 or 90 percent of what people doing on the Internet, spiritualism is not Christianity, but spiritualism. It's from familiar spirits and wackiness, not from God. Be careful, brothers and sisters. Be careful on the internet who you listen to. If you listen, that's one thing. If you know the Word of God, you're a mature Christian, you listen, you can discern and all that, that's great. But I'm so shocked. One thing I'm shocked about, the lack of maturity and biblical knowledge and wisdom in the last day's church. It never ceases to amaze me. The amount of people that are willfully, I say the word willfully ignorant of the Word of God. It's your own fault. You're a Christian. Read the Bible. Read the New Testament. Stop trying to figure out what all these prophecies and end time stuff meaning is. Learn the basics first. Read the New Testament. Read John. Read Galatians. Read the New Testament first. Before you start getting into the Old Testament prophets and Revelation in the New Testament and, and all that, trying to figure those things out, learn the, the New Testament epistles and the Gospels first. God bless you all. I love you all. I appreciate you all. Just continue to pray. You know, as I do this, uh, it's the Jezebel spirit, brothers and sisters. This is the Jezebel spirit. You know, that spirit of Elijah, this last day's anointing, spirit of Elijah upon the church. You know, as we prepare for entering into these, you know, the end times, that spirit of Jezebel is, is growing and growing and growing. Even in Revelation, one of the letters to the churches, or two of them, we see the Lord mentioning about that spirit of Jezebel. Leading the people into, particularly sexual sin, is one of, one of the biggies. Very miry area, brothers and sisters. I can only walk. It's like, you know, Peter walked on the water. I can only do it by the grace of God. I cannot do it in my flesh. Spiritual things like this. As for your prayers, God will strengthen me and protect me. Because I know the Lord wants me to go further into this stuff. And to whip out that sword of the Spirit and the armor of God bring down these strongholds. But we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. 
God bless you all. Love you all.